all right we're back once again thank you for joining me on another interesting topic that i have for all of us today <clears throat> if you're on to this channel for the first time i will urge you to please subscribe to my channel press on that bell notification so that you will be notified whenever i post a fresh video so thank you once again and like i told you people in one of my posts that i made recently that when i come up next time that we are going to talk about how you can detect a witch or a wizard around you be it your friends be it whosoever how you can detect them yes i posted that video in as much as i when i posted that video i was you know posting other videos that i made based on a new program that we discovered concerning women and how to empower women all over the world so in today's topic, like I said, we are going to talk about how you can detect a witch or a wizard around you. Like I always told you guys, in order for me not to forget, I always list all my topics down so that when I'm telling you or teaching you about it, I won't be able to forget anyone. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly start. So I'm going to start with number one of signs of witches and wizards around you. Many people doesn't know how to detect a witch or a wizard around them. I have been getting so many messages on how we can detect all these kind of people around us. Number one thing you need to know is they are simply human beings like you and I. They don't have two heads or four hands. They are just exactly the way you and I are. So there is nothing extraordinary in their existence that can let you know that these are witches, except if you are aware of these signs that we are going to talk about today. Now, number one sign of how you can detect a witch or a wizard is, number one, they are always around you. Like they always love to be around you. This is not to say that people that cares for you genuinely cannot be around you. But come to think of this, how can someone always want to be around you 24 hours of your life? Like the saying goes 247, is it possible? Sometimes you keep wondering, aren't they working? Or don't they have anything to do with their time? Or don't they want to do other things? They always want to be around you 247. Even if you're working, for example, in your office places, yes, yeah, sure, they, they can come to your office, but you notice that they kept on calling you, monitoring you. You know, one thing we, I want us to understand is monitoring spirits and witches and wizards goes hand in hand. So this person will always be calling, showing you this care, this special care, like there's so much care about you. Then the moment you are back, whether you are married, whether you're single, they will visit you so long as you have never opened your mouth to tell them not to come or maybe that you are indisposed. They will always be there 24 seven of your life. And they normally live in the night. Very early in the morning, the next day, they're already in your house doing what you don't know about. Now, these are one of the signs because a genuine person that cares for you, that actually loves you, yes, will visit you, but not to choke you with their visiting. They don't choke. They will come to your place whenever they feel like coming. Maybe they place a call and let you know they will come at that day. They'll be with you, chat with you. At the end of the day, they go home or they go back to whatever it is they're doing. But they don't try to choke you up. But you see all these ones that chokes you. Whether you want it or not, they are always there. They always visit you. The worst part is that they visit you even if you don't have anything to discuss about, they will just be there. You see them pressing phone because you have nothing to talk about anymore. They will just be there and they continue to be there. And it goes like that even for years, like if you permit it, look out for these people. There is something odd about them. Look in rules, check deep. It is not always glittering the way you see it. There is something behind these are one of the signs you need to know that this person or people like that are witches and wizards. They don't mean they don't mean any good for you. So let's go to number two. Number two is intimidation. Number two is intimidation. They always intimidate you. They always look for every possible or every given chance to intimidate you. 
they always want to let you know that their ideas are better than yours when you how you want to detect a witch or a wizard because these are male and female anyone that loves to intimidate you and care less about your feeling they don't want to know how you feel whether you're feeling bad or not but they enjoy intimidation these are signs that this this person could be a witch or a wizard how come only one person claims to have the best ideas in this world is it possible that is the question you should ask yourself even if you tell them your own idea assuming your own idea so to say does not measure to what you people are discussing about who can tell you to your face that your idea is rubbish that you should go ahead with their own idea anyone that talks like that is a witch or a wizard because a genuine person will help you by letting you know number one a genuine person will tell you something like okay your idea is good but why don't you look at this one then compare the two you can take something away from my own idea and add it to your own idea and we'll come out with a good result a genuine person can tell you this but that witch or that wizard will condemn your idea completely this is intimidation they love to intimidate you they want you to be under them because they hate competition even when you are not competing with them they don't want you people to rise you know head to head with each other they want to subdue you they want to box you up they want to put you under their shoe that is intimidation that person is a witch or wizard so number three is they are, they always counter your belief in christ they always counter your belief in christ whenever both of you are discussing and you are talking about your belief in christ jesus they are not comfortable with it they will always counter it they will always tell you negative things they will in fact when they are telling you negative things about your belief in your christianity or whatever belief you believe in when they are countering it and they notice that it's not getting at you that you don't care that you strongly strongly believe in what you are saying do you know the next thing they will do they will come with intimidation maybe if, if they are your friends for example you are discussing with that particular friend that friend will tell you something like you are no buju you are no buju girl aren't you shameless look at how you are. i beg i beg i beg stop all those discussion please or they will tell you why are you always bringing church here why are you always talking church 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 all the time anybody sees you church 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 please they want to belittle you so that you'll be ashamed of yourself but you don't have to be ashamed of yourself or your belief in christ jesus or your belief in whatever belief you believe in you don't have to feel ashamed that is their own way of subduing you because more especially as christian we are the moment you start talking about jesus christ it hurts them it does something in them they are not comfortable as a christian if you ask me i will tell you the fire unseen hidden fire from your own eyes is actually burning them is burning them as you are mentioning your Christ Jesus and they don't want that because you are keeping them uncomfortable so when they try to counter that discussion and you are not giving in then they will use their intimidation method to belittle you to tell you that you behave like like a village person that everywhere you go you are talking about church 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 that you should compose yourself for one that there's time for everything please that person is a witch or a wizard you better cut them off and have your peace so let's go to number four number four is too many restrictions in their house have you had a friend who is a witch or a wizard but you have nothing no idea about it you know you see them like your normal genuine friends and you go out with them you eat with them you drink with them now this is one of the signs you need to know you need to detect that this person you thought is clean is not who you truly think they are they are always conscious of the things you touch in their houses they are conscious they have so many restrictions in in their properties or whatever it is they have maybe you visit them in your house discussion might be going on the moment you try to check on one decoration they will scream and take out that decoration from you maybe they will tell you do this please, please don't touch this one don't touch just sit down restrictions 
Then another thing is if it's a woman handbag. The moment you touch that handbag, maybe in your innocent mind, you're admiring the handbag because it could be a beautiful handbag. The moment you carried it and say, oh my God, this, they'll snatch it away from you. They'll snatch it and, and start asking you, what is it, what is it? What are you looking inside my handbag? What do you want to see? And you'll be shocked. You'll be like, no, I'm admiring your handbag. Can, can you bring it? Let me just, you know, look at it and know how they'll tell you, no, 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 please, 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 don't, don't touch it. Just leave it. Ordinary handbag. Anyway, ordinary handbag to us, but not an ordinary handbag to them. Then another way is, maybe you are in a house that belongs to a witch, that is your friend. But that particular one is claiming to be a true Christian who knows God, who believes in Christ Jesus, who prays just like you do. Then you notice something, maybe by the bedside or, or, or on the table or wherever, you notice a Bible out of, you know, your being innocent, you know, someone who actually believes in God. You know, picked up that Bible to check on it. They will grab the Bible with speed. They will take away the Bible from you. And they will, maybe you tell them, no, 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 I just want to take a look at that Bible. I just want to, that there's a verse I want to look at. They will tell you, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. They will confuse you with so many thoughts. Take that so-called Bible inside their room, even lock the door of that room, and start discussing a different thing. In fact, they will change that discussion of seeing the Bible or maybe checking a verse in the Bible. Now, when they do things like this, it's, it comes with a shock. Like you're shocked, you'll be wondering, what's in, what is it that he or she doesn't want you to look at in Bible? Even if you feel that you are bold enough to ask them, why don't you want me to look, take a look at your Bible? They will simply ask you, why do you want to look at my Bible? Don't you have Bible at home? Go home and use your own Bible. And when they answer you like that, you, you will be left with nothing to say. You know, you won't say anything naturally. You won't say anything again. Highest thing you will do is, okay, no problem. When I get home, I will use my own Bible. Have you ever asked yourself, why are they hiding the so-called Bible from you? It's not really a Bible, my dear. It could be written Bible on top, but inside is an occultic words, occultic whatever it is they have inside of the so-called Bible. Not truly the Bible you and I know, even though you see it, it was written Bible, but they snatched that Bible away from you Put out the Bible, even lock up where the Bible is and tell you go home and make use of your own Bible. Now, here is the thing. No one, I mean, no one stops anyone from reading a Bible. No one stops anyone from touching a Bible. If you come to a, a true person's house who is not a witch or a wizard and there's a Bible there, if you pick up the Bible, the person will look at you and look away. If you have any question, you can ask. Maybe the discussion might even lead to what and what, you know, Bible verses and all that. But these ones that snatches those Bibles away from you are witches and wizards and might even be something worse that you don't know about. That is why they will never allow you to read their so-called Bible. They'll tell you go home and read yours because it is not truly the Bible you and I know. Those are witches and wizards, or even worse. So, the number five is you. Number five is you can never have a straight conversation with them. It must end their way. Whenever you people are having a discussion, it must end their way. They love arguments, even when both of you see why they call it black, even though it's white. They'll continue to argue with you until you get tired and it must end with them. They don't know how to have a straight conversation. You can't really have a straight conversation with these people. Even when something is plain in the open, there must be an argument with it. At the end of the day, you get tired. You, won't, you wouldn't want to argue with them again. It must always end their way. These are the people you need to know who they truly are so let's go to number six number six is they are envious of you and jealous of you these people are so envious of you 
and all your achievements whether big or little achievements they don't care they are jealous and envious of you now don't tell me you don't know this one this one is very simple the moment you take jealousy and envy in anybody that is witchcraft sign a true person doesn't have any reason to be envious of you or to be jealous of you a true person when they see your achievement you see them saying something like hey god please bless me i would like to have this my friend has here i would like to acquire this i would like to a true person will say it out openly a true person will not hide it and just be eyeing you but a witch or a wizard will be so jealous so envious and they don't even know that they are showing you all these signs because when they are that in their that dark spirit state they manifest without knowing that they are manifesting in such a way that they will be numb they will be eyeing you with a very wicked look without uttering a word i've had such person in our family she was brought in her family when i bought a car that wasn't my first car it wasn't even second wasn't even thought all right i bought a car a new car that particular year and everybody was you know jubilating you know you know how we do it popping wine pouring on the car going around thanking god she didn't utter a word and i used my eyes i was monitoring her with my eyes i was watching her that is what i mean by them manifest without knowing they are manifesting it she never uttered a word she never smiled she was just mute like as if she was numb watching the car looking the car with a very wicked look eyeing the car both the tires the body everything then i was monitoring her with my own eyes i was watching her because seeing as much as jubilation was going on i noticed that so i decided to pick interest to know why she was that angry she was watching it so she was turning her face i purposely looked away but i was watching with my side her she was looking at me up and down head to toe up and down at a point with annoyance in my heart i turned she never expected it i turned and started staring at her directly in her face she looked away with speak one thing is you know they are cowards they can't face you they can't face you one on one they are Cowards, she looked away. So when the distraction of happiness was going on, she started eyeing the car with a wicked look. This is a witch. They can never be happy for you. It doesn't matter the achievements. If you like, run inside and tell them I managed to buy a bag of rice. They won't be happy that you bought that bag of rice, even though you won't even count buying a bag of rice like someone who won like one billion they will still be envying you in that your bag of rice. They're not happy. They are jealous of you in all ramifications. Jealousy and envy, these two are very easy to detect. So you can tell me you don't know about this one. It's very easy to detect. Anyone that does it two for seven of their lives and yet refuses to stay away from you, that is one thing about them. They will hate you, they are jealous of you, they are envious of you. Every day they will keep coming to you. Every day they will always be around you. Because they are monitoring your life. Like I told you, which is a wizard that goes hand in hand with the monitoring spirits. All of them are accepting. They are monitoring your life. They are looking for loopholes to cause havoc in your life. So when you detect such person, please delete them from your life. To avoid any hazards in the nearest future. They don't mean well for you. So let's quickly go to number seven.